Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Uh, today we're going to be talking about oil and more specifically the differences in what is stated in the manual for the Camaro, for the LT1, for the LT4. We're going to talk about the 5W30, the 0W40, 5W50, 15W50, 0W50. We might do it all. We're also going to cover things like which oil filter you should use why the PF64 has always been recommended and what some other alternatives are for and which ones you should stay away from. So join me on the channel. We got a table set up so that we can cover all this for you. Uh, stay tuned. Hey, before I forget, this was definitely shot after I already filmed the video. So uh, I'm gonna toss this in real quick. This is not a sponsored video. Uh, I either purchased all of these or borrowed these from uh, some of my friends. And I do want to give a shout out and a thanks to um, Patrick Mamba on the forums for blowing up his LT1 engine so that we could eventually do all of the research and get into the thicker viscosity oils and things like that. Um, my good friend Tom Froling over at General Motors, Mike Casibo over at General Motors, um, Mike Budney for letting me borrow some of this stuff. But uh, I hope you enjoy the video and I hope you learn something from it. Yeah. All right, everybody. Uh, thanks for joining me. If you haven't been to this channel before, there's a lot of how-to videos. There are some track day videos, a couple of vlogs here and there. But um, ideally, the main focus of my channel is to make sure that everybody is a little bit more educated, specifically around the Camaro platform. But a lot of my content also applies to other platforms like the Corvette, uh, the Challengers, some of the Mustangs, uh, Vipers even in some cases, depending on what we're talking about. But today we are talking about oil. And uh, more specifically, we are talking about what kind of oil to use and what kind of scenarios. There's a lot of confusion with the sixth gen Camaro platform, whether it's the LT1 or the LT4, that's in the SS and the ZL1, whether that's a 1LE or not, it all applies. Um, but we'll cover things like why the PF64 oil filter is recommended, why there are some alternatives like the Wix filter that is also a great option. And we'll cover some of the filters that really aren't so great for the application. And I'll cover that uh, a little bit later. But first, we'll dive right into the discrepancies within the owner's manuals of the 6th gen Camaro. So in the early 6th gen manuals, like the uh, 16 through 18, maybe even the 19, uh, you'll see that the owner's manuals calls for 5W30. And that can be confusing. In fact, the oil caps that came on the cars, even up to, I believe, 2020, had a 5W30 cap on the valve cover. Um, so what happened is that when the vehicles were initial, uh, initially shipped, initially uh, set up for EPA testing and things like that, they were filled, measured, EPA uh, numbers were based on a 5W30 oil weight or oil viscosity. And they were testing the ESP Dexos 2 0W40, which we have right here, uh, on the Corvette platform, which had the LT1. Now, this is before the LT4 was even introduced. We're talking 2014 15 for the uh, Camaros, I'm sorry, for the Corvettes. So, while that testing was happening, um, you know, that there's a lot that goes into EPA testing and certification and things like that. So, they weren't able to get the 0W40 approved for the Camaro uh, until a much later date. So that's where the 5W30 versus 0W40 discrepancy comes from. Uh, I think it was 2017 or 18, uh, there was an addendum that was sent out and uh, Chevrolet started with all of the Corvettes first and they said, all of the LT1s are now factory filled and the recommended oil is 0W40, Dexos 2, uh, and that was the recommended fill for both street use and track use. That trickled down over to the LT1 for the Camaro because it's the same engine. 
Uh, and then eventually when the Z06 and the ZL1 were launched with the LT4, the same thing applied. However, owner's manuals don't always get updated as quickly. Plus there's, again, EPA testing that has to go down for the specific oil weights so that they can put it in writing essentially. So why the 5W30 versus 0W40 in your owner's manual? That kind of covers that reason. Shortly after all of that information was released, uh, there was a uh, track prep guide that was released with the Camaro, especially for like the 1LE models, both the SS 1LE uh, and the ZL1 1LE that called out 15W50. And more specifically, it calls out 15W50 for track use only. And a big part of the reason for that is uh, it has to be track use only because going back to those EPA standards and the uh, miles per gallon uh, claims, you know, when, when a company like GM puts out a, a claim that the car will get, you know, 19 miles per gallon, it's based on a specific oil weight that is in the car. Now, 15W50 is designed to be used on track because it is a heavier weight oil and it'll give you better protection, especially if you are going through some long corners, some sweepers. Um, you know, the, the Camaro has a wet sump system. So uh, the oil, the thicker oil helps uh, keep parts of the engine lubricated longer during those high G-force load uh, scenarios, right? Now, they can't tell you to keep 15W50 in it because legally, that is not what the car was certified with. Um, with the EPA, you know, your miles per gallon is going to vary and uh, a thicker, heavier weight oil will get you, you know, up to half mile per gallon less, one mile per gallon less. It really depends on your driving scenarios and there's a ton of variables, but <clears throat> that is the reason that it says, you know, 15W50 for track use only or off-road use only, and then immediately switch back to the 0W40, which is the factory recommended fill. So you're probably wondering, why do you have all these different oils up here? Well, to add more confusion, uh, in 2022, Mobile One replaced the ESP formula with 0W40 Supercar. Now, these are essentially the same thing. This is just an older bottle. This is the new bottle. The Supercar brand name came out um, and they replaced the old ESP 0W40 with the Supercar 0W40. Uh, so <laughs> to further add confusion, there's also a European formula 0W40 which is also technically ESP rated now, but wasn't when this stuff was around initially. So what happens if you have some of this laying around and you have some of this laying around and you go and pick some of this up? Well, ideally you wouldn't want to mix all of your different oils together. These are the same. Go ahead and use these interchangeably. If you still find old bottles of this laying around, it's the same stuff as this here. However, the European formula is different. It does have different detergents in it, different levels of zinc, different levels of ZDDP. So if you had to use it in a pinch, you can. Uh, I wouldn't recommend constantly using it, but if you have to even use it as a short fill, you can mix these together. You can mix these together it's not going to do any long-term damage. Um, they're just going to have different burn-off rates, different detergents, and the detergents could harm the catalytic converters. For all intents and purposes of this video, we're talking a stock motor here. If you don't have catalytic converters, if you're not worried about emissions, uh, it doesn't matter. You can you know, mix and, and match these as you need. You can leave 1550 in the car the entire time. You can run 050 which is a specific racing oil all the time. The last bottle of oil that I have here is the Supercar 5W50. This was introduced with the eighth generation Corvette Z06. So the C8 Z06 has a 
ridiculously awesome engine. It revs to the moon. It puts out a massive amount of power. Um, and because of that, uh, GM and Mobile One created the Supercar 5W50. So it gives you better protection at those high RPM uh, ranges, at those high G loads. Um, and if you have a three season vehicle, uh, if your Camaro is only driven in the spring, summer, and fall, this is actually a great alternative for you, especially if you track the car, uh, or if you're running a more aggressive tire than the OEM Supercar 3. Uh, the, the heavier weight oil will help lubricate and protect better for you. And as the, uh, as the GM small block chief engineer told me, uh, this oil is like the magic elixir. They wish they would have had this stuff back when the Camaro was initially launched, uh, when they initially certified it was zero W 40. Um, but it's here now, uh, it is available. It, it's tough to find right now, but you can still get it. Um, and this is what I run in my Camaro for the reasons that it's only a three season car. I don't drive it in the winter, so I don't need that lower temperature protection of the zero side, right? The five is totally fine. Uh, the 50 weight on the, on the high end is fantastic because it offers uh, better lubrication, especially when I'm going through high G load corners like the carousel at Road America. Um, and ideally, I'm never gonna see freezing cold temps with this oil anyway, so I don't need the low temperature protection that like the zero W uh, offers for you. So with that being said, always follow your manufacturer's recommendation for your oil fill. If you're worried about uh, avoided warranty or anything like that from a specific oil that you're using, um, double check with uh, people in the know for your vehicle platform. Uh, th again, this video is specific to the Camaro, but it applies to a lot of different vehicles as well. Any track vehicle, really. Um, you know, 15W50, you can use this if it's also a three season vehicle and you're never going to be driving in the winter. You can actually leave 15W50 in the car all the time. The reason that GM tells you that you have to take it out, again, is because of the uh, certification with the EPA for the gas mileage and things like that. So, uh, this stuff is way cheaper. It's more readily available than the supercar stuff. Um, and it offers great protection, but I would use this if you did more track driving with your car than street driving. If you're doing a lot of street driving with, uh, a fair amount of track work, I would go with a 5W50 supercar. And if you're a canyon carver or you love to run the tail of the dragon and you might do one or two track days a year, stick with the OEM Supercar 0W40, the Dexos R branding, um, and this will get you everywhere you need to go. So you've made it this far through the video. Let's cover the filters. The there's, there's so much that goes into a filter, uh, more than just the filtration capability, but the PF64 is the OEM uh, filter for the LT1, for the LT4, whether it's a Corvette, whether it's a Camaro, PF64 is the filter for it. Now, obviously the, the filter exists to filter out contaminants within the oil. And it, if you don't know, or you might be wondering, well, how do contaminants get into the oil? Um, it happens just from normal engine wear and tear over the thousands and thousands of miles that your engine goes through little tiny metal particles and, and shavings. We're talking like microns small end up getting into your oil and the purpose of the filter is to filter it out. So there's a couple of things with oil filters that a lot of people don't realize or don't know. And that's that oil filters have a bypass valve pressure rating. So early on, the PF64 was rated at 15 PSI. Uh, when it was being used for the LT1 and LT4, it got reclassified, it was rebuilt, it's configured now with a 22 PSI bypass valve. And you're probably wondering, why does that even matter? So 
I won't go into like an engineering explained version of how a bypass filter works, but ideally if the oil filter starts to get clogged, um, that bypass valve filter opens up to allow oil back into the engine. So this is rated at 22 PSI. The safe range for the LT1 and LT4 is 22 to 30 PSI. Uh, if you have a filter that has too low of a bypass valve, uh, what can happen is that those contamination particles can actually get re-entered into the engine. And that's not good. And if you end up with an oil filter that has too high of a bypass rating, you could end up losing oil flow to the engine and then you get a little bit of oil starvation, which may not happen right away, but it's something that over time could affect you. So the PF64 is the proper filter to use. It has a 22 PSI bypass valve rating and is designed for the LT1 and LT4. There are alternatives out there. The Wix XP WL10290XP filter, and I had to read that because I'm never going to remember that, uh, <coughs> is an aftermarket filter made by Wix, obviously, that has the same 22 PSI bypass valve rating. And when I picked this up and I started looking at the construction of this, I know a lot of people love this filter. Uh, Wix gets a, has a great reputation in the automotive industry for building great filters. And technically they're made by Mann and Hummel who makes a lot of other filters too. But the Wix XP line is a pretty stout and solid filter. Uh, it's a little bit taller, a little teeny bit taller than the PF64, but there's no issue with that difference from a clearance standpoint at the, at the Camaro. Um, and just looking at the difference and how these are constructed, uh, I may actually switch to the Wix XP, even though I have like four other PF64 filters that I bought at a ridiculously cheap rate. So um, these are the two recommended filters that uh, I would stand behind. Uh, they have the right bypass valve rating their build quality is, is fantastic. So you're wondering, you see all this Mobile One stuff here, uh, why not use the Mobile One filter? And Mobile One makes a filter for the LT1 and LT4 application. It's the M1113A. <clears throat> the, the problem with the M1113A Mobile One oil filter is that its bypass valve rating is uh, anywhere from 12 to 15 PSI. And I say anywhere from because I looked everywhere for a specific answer for a specific number and I couldn't find one. So I called mobile one directly and they gave me the approximate 12 to 15 PSI rating. So that's far too low. Uh, what can happen is it'll, it, it has an easier chance of allowing old contaminated oil back into the engine without being filtered. Now, there's another option. There's the AC Delco Gold version of the PF64, which is UPF64R. And it is a little bit taller. I think it's even a little bit taller than the Wix filter. And a lot of people um, use that filter because they think it's better. It's actually listed as an alternative part number when this isn't available. And I understand why GM or AC Delco does that. Um, but the reason that you don't want to run the UPF64R is because it has a 35 PSI bypass rating. That's way too high, especially if you're going to be tracking the car. If you're running into a scenario where the filter is not going to allow fluid to bypass up until it gets 35 PSI, you could actually start restricting the oil flow and that can lead to uh, wear and tear on the internals of the engine. So can you use it in a pinch? Absolutely. Do I recommend using it all the time? I don't. Uh, stick with the PF64 or the Wix alternative. Um, you know, will you be fine with a UPF64R with street use? I'm sure. If you're ever going to take it to the track, why risk uh, damage to the engine for something that's not even cheaper? It's actually more expensive and it's just the wrong application for it. So, um, 
that's kind of where we're at with filters. It's always important to find the proper bypass rating for your engine specifically and the application for it. I mentioned earlier the safe range for bypass uh, pressure on the LT1 and LT4 for the filter is 20, uh, 22 to 30 PSI. PF64 does 22, the Wix does 22, the mobile one does 12 to 15, and the UPF64R AC Delco Gold filter uh, does 35. So these are the two safe ones. I don't recommend using the other ones. Uh, your mileage may vary. Obviously, if you have to use them in a pinch, you can. I just wouldn't use them consistently. Now, I know I talked about a lot, and I'm sure that I didn't answer half of the questions that you may all have. So uh, with that being said, I would love to hear your feedback. Let me know what you think. Am I crazy for going to the 5W50? Uh, do you think the detergents are really different enough here or not? Um, I'd love to hear back from you. Uh, leave your comments in the, uh, in the comments section or leave your remarks in the comments section. And I do my best to answer all of them. So hopefully I can, uh, I can get to some of your questions that weren't answered during this video. So until next time, thanks for joining the channel. Uh, if you, this is your first visit here, check out some of the other videos that I have. Uh, on how to do the oil change. I'll pop it up up here. Um, lots and lots of uh, content on how to's for the Camaro on how to do brakes and oil changes and getting your car track ready. Uh, also I have some track day content. If you just like to hear a V8 whale in the background, um, go ahead and look up some of my track videos, the in-car videos and just let it play and listen to that sweet roaring V8 in the background. Till next time, see you then.